The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey is a timeless classic that has impacted millions of lives worldwide. In this transformative self-help book, Covey presents a comprehensive guide to personal and interpersonal effectiveness, focusing on principles that foster both personal and professional success. The book is structured into seven chapters, each delving into a specific habit, and offers actionable insights to help readers lead a more purposeful and fulfilling life. Chapter 1. Be Proactive in the first chapter of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey lays the foundation for personal effectiveness by advocating the principle of proactivity. He emphasizes that being proactive means taking responsibility for one's life and choices, regardless of the external circumstances. Proactive individuals understand that they have the power to control their responses and actions, rather than being driven by reactive emotions. Covey compares proactive individuals to those who are reactive. Reactive people allow external factors, such as other people's behavior or environmental conditions, to dictate their emotions and actions. On the other hand, proactive people are driven by their values, principles, and personal mission, allowing them to make conscious decisions and take initiative to create positive change. An example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies proactivity is Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was the first African American to play in Major League Baseball, MLB, in the modern era, breaking the color barrier in 1947. He faced immense racism and prejudice both on and off the field. Despite the adversity and hostility directed towards him, Robinson remained proactive in his approach to the game and the challenges he encountered. Robinson's proactivity was evident in how he chose to respond to racism and discrimination. Instead of retaliating with anger or bitterness, he responded with dignity, courage, and perseverance. He remained focused on his mission to play baseball and pave the way for other African-American players. Robinson knew that his actions would have a significant impact beyond just the game of baseball, and he took that responsibility seriously. By staying proactive, Robinson not only excelled as a baseball player, but also became an iconic figure in the civil rights movement. His actions, both on and off the field, helped challenge racial segregation and inspire positive social change. Robinson's proactivity in the face of adversity set an example for future generations of athletes and leaders to emulate, showing that personal responsibility and a strong commitment to one's values can lead to transformative outcomes. In our own lives, we can learn from Jackie Robinson's example of proactivity. When faced with challenges, whether in our personal or professional spheres, we have the choice to be proactive and take control of our responses. Instead of allowing external circumstances to define us, we can align our actions with our values and work towards our goals with determination and resilience. By being proactive, we become architects of our destinies, able to steer our lives in the direction we desire. This powerful habit empowers us to make positive changes, not just for ourselves, but also for the greater good of society. Through the story of Jackie Robinson, Covey's message of proactivity becomes more tangible and relatable, inspiring us to embrace this essential habit and lead a more effective and purposeful life. Chapter 2. Begin with the End in Mind in Chapter 2 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of begin with the end in mind. This habit revolves around the principle of personal leadership and the importance of having a clear vision of one's long-term goals and values. Covey emphasizes that effective individuals are guided by a well-defined sense of purpose and direction, which serves as a compass for their actions and decisions. To begin with the end in mind, Covey encourages readers to engage in a process of mental creation and envision their desired outcomes in various aspects of life. 
He suggests creating a personal mission statement that encapsulates one's values, principles, and long-term objectives. This mission statement becomes the guiding force that shapes one's daily choices and helps prioritize activities that align with the bigger picture. By having a clear vision of what they want to achieve, individuals become proactive in setting goals and making choices that lead them in the right direction. They are better equipped to overcome challenges and stay focused on their journey, as they can constantly remind themselves of the ultimate destination they are striving for. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who embodies the principle of begin with the end in mind, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time, demonstrated exceptional personal leadership and a clear vision of his goals throughout his illustrious career. From an early age, Jordan had dreams of becoming a professional basketball player and winning championships in the NBA. As a high school player, Jordan was known for his relentless work ethic and commitment to improving his skills. He set his sights on playing college basketball and ultimately reaching the NBA. With each step, he kept his long-term goal in mind and worked tirelessly to achieve it. After joining the NBA, Jordan faced challenges, including tough competition and setbacks. However, he never lost sight of his ultimate goal, to become an NBA champion. His dedication and determination were evident in his daily routines, as he practiced for hours, both on the court and in the gym, honing his craft and pushing his limits. Jordan's personal mission statement was clear he wanted to be the best basketball player he could be, and that meant winning championships. He visualized success, and his mental preparation was as crucial as his physical training. His focus on the end goal helped him maintain unwavering motivation, even during difficult times. Throughout his career, Jordan won six NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls, achieved numerous accolades, and left an indelible impact on the sport of basketball. His success was a direct result of his ability to begin with the end in mind to establish a clear vision of his aspirations and use that vision to drive his actions and decisions. As readers, we can learn from Michael Jordan's example and apply the habit of begin with the end in mind to our own lives. By visualizing our desired outcomes and aligning our actions with our long-term goals, we can cultivate personal leadership and proactively work towards achieving success in whatever field or endeavor we pursue. Jordan's story serves as a powerful reminder that having a clear sense of purpose and direction can propel us to greatness and enable us to leave a lasting legacy. Chapter 3. Put First Things First in Chapter 3 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of put first things first. This habit centers on time management and the importance of prioritizing activities based on their significance. Covey presents the time management matrix, a powerful tool that helps individuals categorize tasks into four quadrants. 1. Quadrant 1, urgent and important tasks in this quadrant are both urgent and important, such as crises, pressing deadlines, and emergencies. These tasks demand immediate attention and cannot be ignored. 2. Quadrant 2, not urgent but important tasks in this quadrant are important but not urgent, such as long-term planning, relationship building, and personal development. These activities contribute to long-term success and well-being, but often get neglected in favor of more urgent matters. 3. Quadrant 3. Urgent but not important tasks in this quadrant are urgent but not important, such as interruptions, unnecessary meetings, and some phone calls. These tasks tend to distract and consume time without adding significant value. 4. Quadrant 4. Not urgent and not important tasks in this quadrant are neither urgent nor important, such as excessive social media browsing, mindless entertainment, and other time-wasting activities. 
Covey emphasizes the importance of spending more time in Quadrant 2, focusing on important activities that contribute to personal and professional growth. By doing so, individuals can reduce the number of crises in Quadrant 1 and gain better control over their time and priorities. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies the principle of put first things first Roger Federer. Roger Federer, a Swiss professional tennis player, is regarded as one of the greatest athletes in the history of tennis. Beyond his exceptional talent on the court, Federer is known for his remarkable ability to manage his time and priorities effectively. Despite a demanding and rigorous tennis schedule, Federer has consistently balanced his personal life, philanthropic efforts, and career commitments. Federer recognizes the importance of Quadrant 2 activities in his life. While he dedicates time to intense tennis training and competition, Quadrant 1, he also places significant emphasis on long-term planning and personal development, Quadrant 2. He engages in strategic training sessions to improve his skills, works on physical fitness and recovery to maintain peak performance, and collaborates with his coaching team to set clear goals for the future. Beyond his professional commitments, Federer is deeply committed to giving back to society. He has established the Roger Federer Foundation, which focuses on providing education and sports opportunities for children in disadvantaged communities, Quadrant 2. Federer understands the long-term impact of investing in education and empowering young minds, and he allocates time and resources to support this noble cause. While Federer's schedule is undoubtedly filled with various commitments and demands, he also recognizes the importance of family and personal time, Quadrant 2. Despite his busy tennis calendar, he ensures that he spends quality time with his family and maintains a healthy work-life balance. By effectively managing his time and prioritizing Quadrant 2 activities, Roger Federer has maintained a successful and fulfilling career both on and off the tennis court. His ability to put first things first has not only contributed to his exceptional achievements in tennis, but also to his positive impact on society and his well-rounded personal life. As readers, we can learn from Roger Federer's example and apply the habit of put first things first to our own lives. By identifying and focusing on activities that align with our long-term goals, values, and personal development, we can improve our time management skills and lead a more balanced and purpose-driven life. Federer's story serves as a powerful reminder that effective time management is essential for achieving success and making a meaningful difference in the world. Chapter 4, Think Win-Win In Chapter 4 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of think win-win. This habit emphasizes the importance of cultivating an abundance mentality where individuals seek mutually beneficial outcomes in all their interactions and relationships. Covey contrasts this approach with a scarcity mentality where people believe that for one person to win, others must lose. The think-win-win mindset is founded on collaboration, cooperation, and empathy. It involves finding creative solutions that satisfy the needs of all parties involved, rather than seeking to dominate or undermine others. Covey suggests that adopting a win-win mentality fosters trust, strengthens relationships, and creates a supportive environment for personal and professional growth. When individuals think win-win, they genuinely care about the well-being and success of others, recognizing that their own success is not dependent on someone else's failure. This habit promotes a culture of collaboration, teamwork, and collective achievement, leading to positive and sustainable outcomes. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies the principle of think win-win Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King, an American tennis player, is not only renowned for her exceptional skills on the tennis court, but also for her tireless advocacy for gender equality in sports. Throughout her career, 
King fought for equal pay and opportunities for female athletes, paving the way for future generations of women in sports. One of the most iconic moments in King's career came in 1973 when she accepted a challenge from Bobby Riggs, a former Wimbledon champion who claimed that even at the age of 55, he could defeat any top female tennis player. The exhibition match, known as the Battle of the Sexes, gained significant attention and symbolized the broader struggle for gender equality in sports. As a passionate advocate for women's rights and gender equality, King approached the match with a win-win mindset. She recognized the importance of the event beyond the tennis court. King understood that her victory would not only be a personal triumph, but also a symbolic win for women's rights in general. During the match, King played with exceptional skill and determination, eventually defeating Riggs and proving that women's tennis was not to be underestimated. The victory resonated globally and significantly contributed to the advancement of women's sports, leading to increased recognition and opportunities for female athletes. King's win-win mentality was evident not just in the battle of the sexes match, but also in her ongoing advocacy for gender equality. She fought for equal prize money for women at Grand Slam tournaments and was instrumental in the formation of the Women's Tennis Association, WTA. King's commitment to collaboration and her genuine concern for the well-being of others were instrumental in driving positive change in the world of sports. She understood that true success in her mission meant breaking down barriers and opening doors for others, not at the expense of others. As readers, we can learn from Billie Jean King's example and apply the habit of think win-win to our own lives. By seeking mutually beneficial outcomes and supporting the success of others, we can create a more inclusive and supportive environment, both in our personal relationships and in the broader communities we are part of. King's legacy as a sports icon and a champion for gender equality serves as a powerful reminder of the impact that can be made when we adopt a win-win mindset and work together to create positive change in the world. Chapter 5. Seek First to Understand, Then to Be Understood In Chapter 5 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of seek first to understand, then to be understood. This habit centers around the principle of empathetic communication and active listening. Covey emphasizes that effective communication goes beyond merely expressing ourselves. It involves genuinely understanding others' perspectives and emotions before trying to make ourselves understood. Often, people engage in what Covey calls autobiographical responses, where they listen to others while formulating their own responses in their minds without fully grasping the other person's message. This leads to misunderstandings, conflicts, and missed opportunities for meaningful connections. By adopting the habit of seeking first to understand, individuals can improve their relationships and problem-solving abilities. When we take the time to listen actively and empathetically, we create an environment of trust and mutual respect, which opens the door for more effective and collaborative communication. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies the principle of seek first to understand, then to be understood, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, the iconic South African anti-apartheid revolutionary and political leader, is renowned for his commitment to reconciliation, understanding, and forgiveness. During his fight against apartheid, Mandela's ability to empathize and seek to understand the perspectives of others played a pivotal role in fostering dialogue and unity among diverse communities. While imprisoned for 27 years, Mandela could have easily emerged as a vengeful and divisive leader. However, he recognized the importance of empathetic communication in the pursuit of a peaceful and democratic South Africa. Even amid immense suffering and oppression, Mandela engaged in dialogue with prison officials and those who supported the apartheid regime, seeking to understand their motivations and fears. 
Upon his release from prison in 1990, Mandela continued his commitment to empathy and reconciliation. Instead of seeking revenge, he advocated for forgiveness and understanding as a path to healing the deep wounds of apartheid. He engaged in dialogue with the white minority government, seeking to understand their concerns and fears while also conveying the aspirations of the oppressed black majority. Mandela's empathetic approach and his ability to listen actively to all sides helped in the peaceful transition of South Africa to a multiracial democracy. He pursued a policy of reconciliation and worked to bridge the gap between black and white communities, striving for a united nation where everyone could live in harmony and equality. His efforts culminated in 1994 when South Africa held its first democratic elections and Mandela became the country's first black president. His presidency was marked by a continued commitment to empathy and understanding, promoting the vision of a rainbow nation where diversity was celebrated and everyone had a voice. Nelson Mandela's legacy serves as a profound example of the power of empathetic communication and the habit of seeking first to understand. His ability to listen and understand the perspectives of others, even in the face of great adversity, transformed him into a statesman who could unite a divided nation and inspire the world. As readers, we can learn from Mandela's example and apply the habit of seeking first to understand in our own lives. By actively listening to others and seeking to understand their viewpoints and emotions, we can build stronger and more compassionate relationships, resolve conflicts more effectively, and contribute to a more harmonious and inclusive world. Mandela's story is a testament to the transformative impact of empathetic communication and serves as a timeless reminder of the power of understanding and achieving meaningful change. Chapter 6. Synergize In Chapter 6 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of synergize. This habit revolves around the principle of creative cooperation, where individuals work together to achieve results that are greater than what they could accomplish individually. Synergy is about valuing and leveraging diversity, combining different perspectives, talents, and strengths to create innovative and transformative solutions. Covey highlights that when people synergize, they go beyond compromise and seek to find win-win solutions that address the needs and interests of all parties involved. Synergy fosters a collaborative and open-minded approach to problem-solving, leading to better decision-making and stronger relationships. Synergy is not merely the sum of individual efforts, it is the result of harmonious teamwork, where each person's contributions enhance and complement one another. By embracing synergy, individuals can unleash the full potential of their teams and create an environment where creativity and cooperation thrive. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies the principle of synergize, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, two basketball legends of the 1980s, are often credited with reinvigorating the popularity of the NBA and elevating basketball to new heights. Their rivalry on the court was legendary, but their mutual respect and admiration for each other's skills set an example of true synergy in sports. In the early 1980s, the NBA was facing declining TV ratings and lacked the excitement and star power it once had. Then came Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, two players who represented different coasts, playing for the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics, respectively. They were also representative of different playing styles of Johnson, the flashy point guard with exceptional passing skills, and Bird, the versatile forward with deadly shooting accuracy. The rivalry between the Lakers and the Celtics became a focal point of the NBA, and the two teams faced each other in several NBA finals during the 1980s. Rather than letting their rivalry devolve into animosity, Johnson and Bird embraced the opportunity to elevate the game and showcase their talents on the grandest stage. Off the court, 
Johnson and Bird also exemplified synergy by working together for the betterment of the NBA. They appeared in commercials together, promoting the league and their rivalry in a lighthearted and entertaining manner. Their collaborative efforts helped increase the NBA's popularity and drew in new fans, leading to a surge in viewership. Their mutual respect and willingness to work together demonstrated that synergy in sports is not limited to the performance on the court, but extends to promoting the sport and fostering a positive impact beyond individual achievements. In the 1992 Summer Olympics, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird united as part of the legendary Dream Team, a collection of the best basketball players in the United States. This extraordinary team showcased synergy at its finest, as players from different NBA teams joined forces to dominate international basketball and showcase the true spirit of teamwork. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird's example of synergy in sports serves as a powerful reminder of the impact that collaboration and creative cooperation can have in achieving extraordinary results. Their ability to set aside personal rivalries and work together for a common goal not only benefited their own careers, but also left a lasting legacy on the sport of basketball, influencing future generations of players to embrace the power of synergy on and off the court. As readers, we can learn from Magic Johnson and Larry Bird's example and apply the habit of synergizing in our own lives. By recognizing and valuing the strengths and perspectives of others, we can create a harmonious and collaborative environment where individual talents combine to achieve remarkable outcomes. Their story emphasizes that true greatness is achieved not in isolation, but through the power of synergy and collective effort. Chapter 7. Sharpen the Saw in Chapter 7 of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the habit of sharpen the saw. This habit emphasizes the importance of self-renewal and taking care of one's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Covey uses the analogy of a saw to illustrate the concept. Just as a saw becomes less effective and efficient with continuous use without proper maintenance, individuals can experience burnout and diminished effectiveness if they neglect self-care. Covey encourages readers to invest time and effort in activities that promote personal growth, health, and balance. By engaging in activities that nurture the four dimensions of renewal, individuals can enhance their effectiveness, productivity, and overall quality of life. The habit of sharpen the saw involves regularly engaging in activities that promote physical fitness, mental stimulation, emotional well-being, and spiritual connection. By prioritizing self-renewal, individuals can sustain their energy and passion, avoid burnout, and continue to grow and excel in all areas of life. Now, let's explore a new example of a sportsman in history who exemplifies the principle of sharpen the saw of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, also known as the greatest, was not only one of the most iconic and successful boxers in history, but also a symbol of strength, determination, and resilience. While his achievements in the boxing ring were legendary, Ali's commitment to self-renewal and personal growth outside of boxing made him a truly exceptional individual. Throughout his boxing career, Ali demonstrated a rigorous training regimen to maintain peak physical fitness, dimension of physical renewal. He recognized the importance of being in top shape to perform at his best, and he dedicated time to conditioning his body to face the challenges of the sport. Beyond physical fitness, Ali was a voracious reader and advocate for education, dimension of mental renewal. He believed in the power of knowledge and constantly sought to expand his intellectual horizons. Ali engaged in conversations with intellectuals, writers, and philosophers, broadening his understanding of the world and enriching his mind. Ali was also deeply in tune with his emotions and spirituality, dimensions of emotional and spiritual renewal. He embraced a strong sense of self-belief and carried himself with unyielding confidence. 
He was not afraid to express his emotions, whether it was his passion for boxing or his conviction in his beliefs. In the late 1960s, Ali's religious and political beliefs led him to refuse induction into the U.S. military during the Vietnam War, citing his opposition to the war and his religious convictions, spiritual renewal. Although this decision cost him his boxing titles and prime years of his career, Ali stayed true to his principles and demonstrated unwavering integrity. Throughout his life, Muhammad Ali continued to sharpen the saw by investing time in personal growth and self-renewal. He remained committed to his physical fitness, mental stimulation, emotional well-being, and spiritual connection, which not only contributed to his success in the ring, but also made him a respected and influential figure outside of sports. Ali's legacy as an athlete and a human being serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of sharpen the saw in our own lives. By prioritizing self-care and personal growth, we can sustain our effectiveness and make a positive impact in our endeavors and relationships. As readers, we can learn from Muhammad Ali's example and apply the habit of sharpen the saw in our own lives. By regularly nurturing our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, we can lead more fulfilling and purposeful lives, becoming our best selves in every aspect of life, just as Ali did. His story inspires us to be proactive in self-renewal and embrace the continuous journey of personal growth and development. Expand Chapter 8 further and provide a new example of a sportsman in history who is an example to emulate help the reader to fully understand point made.